Hey everyone, I'm back. And like I told you, I want to share with you guys as I learn more about scope testing vehicles. Um, I got three examples this time we're going to take a look at. Uh, one is a 2008 Chevy Trailblazer that had a misfire on uh, cylinder number three. Uh, we had a Chevy Aveo that was out of time. And I also had a 2010 uh, Silverado that had a ground issue. Didn't need to have the oscilloscope for two of these jobs, but it definitely gave us some insight. I wanted to give a shout out to Tom at AutoNerds.com. I purchased my PicoScope equipment from AutoNerds. They give you great customer support and also a wealth of knowledge that goes along with your tool purchase. So getting started, we had a 2008 Chevy Trailblazer with a 4.2 um, that came to the shop with a P0303. So we knew for a fact cylinder number three was misfiring. This vehicle had brand new coils on it, a set of six of them. So you know somebody who was here playing already. Um, right off the bat, I thought the easiest thing that we could do would be take a look at the cranking, uh, a relative cranking test based on the cranking amperage. So I took the amp clamp and put it on a positive cable and gave the vehicle a crank and this is what we have here. Um, the pattern looks relatively uh, normal. I don't see any dropouts. If we had like a flat spot in this pattern, that would definitely be something to be concerned with. Uh, but being as we don't have any flat spots here, it does look uniform and we can count at least one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that would be two full revolutions of the engine and we don't have any drops out, dropouts. So this is the pattern there. This is the back half of it. Here's the first half. It's way up there, the starting amperage of it cranking. But we're not worried about looking at the peak amps in this case. Uh, we weren't going after a, a hard crank problem or anything like that. We wanted to take a look at the cranking RPM after it leveled off. And I don't see any problems there. So the next thing I took a look at was the uh, amperage to the coils. So knowing that cylinder number three was the culprit, at least on a scan tool, racking up misfires, I took the low amp clamp and put it uh, in the power for cylinder number three. And this is what we came up with. So looking at this pattern, we can tell that uh, we have the ramping that we're looking for, that's good. I didn't know what this was. Uh, at the end of this coil, firing as this current's ramped up, right here it's turned off, and this is where the coil is, uh, the coil's firing the plug. This was really dirty. I don't know what this is about. Um, but this was not on other cylinders. If I go to another cylinder to show you guys, this is what all the other cylinders look like right here. We had a nice clean ending to the uh, uh, coiled well. This is when the uh, current is turned off to the coil uh, inside of the coil on this one. This is what we had. The center tip of the electrode was actually bent on this. And uh, once the plug was replaced and we rescoped it, we did not have this ugliness over here. It all went away. I don't understand exactly how to uh, explain this, but this pattern here uh, was something wrong with the spark inside the uh, combustion chamber. Once we put a new plug in there, the problem went away. This part flattened out, it looked normal. The next vehicle we took a look at with the students this week was a 2008 Chevy Aveo. It came into the shop with a P0300 random misfire and also a P0172. This vehicle was running poorly, surging up and down, bucking, jerking. Uh, it could hardly get pulled into the shop when they had pulled it in. So right away, I, I was assuming we might have a cam crank correlation problem. I wasn't sure. Um, opening up the hood, this thing had a new O2 sensor, new coil, new plugs, new wires, and a new cylinder head. So somebody had been monkeying around here. We didn't know what was going on. So it took me about six minutes to grab uh, this uh, cam and crank signal here. Looking at this cam and crank signal, we can definitely tell that we have a pattern that looks pretty good, but that doesn't mean that it's lined up properly in a vehicle. Whenever you scope something out, we have to know what known good looks like. For that, I went to the IATN. They're a great resource, and right on their website, I'm telling you within 30 seconds of typing in 2008 Chevy Aveo, there was somebody else that already posted uh, patterns of known good and known bad cam and crank signals. Right on the ITN website, they said we should have 28 crankshaft teeth 
uh, in the signal between the rising edge of the camshaft here and the last edge of the crankshaft before the missing tooth. And we had 25 teeth in this region. So we knew by this that the engine was definitely out of time. There's no question about it. After we readjusted the timing and got the timing belt back in line the way it should be, we had a noticeable difference and we had 28 teeth between the rising edge of the camshaft and the last pattern of the crankshaft before the missing tooth. So that was a great example of how a scope can save tons of time. People have been throwing parts at that and guessing and didn't know which way to go and it really didn't take a whole lot of time if we stop and think, hook up the scope, analyze the pattern, find known good waveforms and compare. So that was a, a good find there. The next vehicle we were working on was a 2010 Chevy Silverado. This vehicle uh, actually was a Sierra, I take that back, I, my apologies, same difference. This vehicle came into the shop with a customer complaint. The only complaint they had was the radio was making interference noise. Um, the student working on this didn't hear anything. I stuck my head in there. We tried all kinds of things, AM, FM. I didn't hear anything going on. But I did notice that as this vehicle cranked over, it was laboring to start. You could tell. Um, I would have put my money and said it had a bad battery, to be honest with you. But uh, once we had the vehicle running, a quick and easy test always to do is take your voltmeter, go to the negative battery cable, and then go to the block. You should read very low voltage. Should be maybe 100 or 200 millivolts maximum when it's running. And uh, this vehicle had 800 millivolts, just battery ground to the block. So we knew we had a bad ground somewhere. I wanted to scope test this thing as it was cranking. So I put my scope leads, my negative lead on the battery, and my positive lead on the engine block, right where the ground is for jump starting on the uh, left front of the cylinder head there. And this is what we had. So right here, uh, the key's turned on, then we go to crank, and we have uh, spikes real quickly here up to six volts, but in all reality, you know, we're probably looking about three and a half volts if you look at the mean, mean here. Um, a three and a half volt drop as this thing's cranking is way too much. Something's not right. So we can take a little ruler and you know you can do that and see what's going on there but uh, and once it's running uh, we're still seeing spikes of 400 millivolts or so give or take. My voltmeter read a little bit different than a scope probably from the way it samples I'm assuming but um, that was a bad ground. Believe it or not the ground on this vehicle, the main battery ground, was tucked up underneath the battery. Somebody had just put an engine in this vehicle, I found out, and the customer says the radio hasn't worked right for them since the engine was installed. So we have this uh, same vehicle with our test leads in the same place, and this is the pattern we have here once we went to crank it. You'll see, you can tell this little spike in the voltage probably when we turn the key on. Um, if I just zoom in on this, you can see a little spike when we turn the key on. And then continue on as we go to crank, and this thing starts up and runs, uh, we don't have nearly the voltage drop that we did before. We were going up to maybe five tenths of a volt at the best, at the highest end as this thing's cranking, but that drops off really quick down to about three tenths of a volt. So really, this had a bad ground. The main ground strap wasn't even hooked up. I would not even thought the vehicle could run like that. So those are a few things that I did this past week with my scope. Um, I have some other examples. I'll be uh, putting some stuff together to share with you guys. I hope you're getting something out of these videos. Uh, please do check out autoowners.com. Uh, you guys have a great day. I appreciate you watching. Do like and subscribe.